This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and this week you and I are so blessed because we're able to spend time with my friend Joseph Z. Now before I reintroduce him today, I want to remind you that I wrote a book which is called Apostles and Prophets. You know what's funny about this book? When I sat down to write it, I said to my wife, Denise, I think this is going to be a little book. I really don't have that much to say. Well, it's 745 pages and really is the go-to book on how to know who is an apostle and who is not, and who is a prophet and who is not. And my friends, if you don't have this book, you need to have this book. But in this book, I talk about the fact that there are a lot of sincere people who want to be prophets. Praise God for their desire, but they're not prophets. They're calling themselves something that they are not. Maybe they have a prophetic leaning or inkling, but they're not really prophets. Well, what is a prophet? Well, guess what? I answer that question in this book, and in this week's program, I'm with a real prophet, my friend Joseph Z, and I'm so glad that he's with me and he's with you. And I want you to order the series, which we're teaching this week. Really, Joseph is teaching it, and it's called Breaking Hell's Economy. And my friends, this is just anointed. It is filled with passion. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats, and it comes with a great study guide so that everything that is in the series is in the study guide so that you can read it while you're seeing it or hearing the series. And when you hear it while you're seeing or hearing it, it really reinforces the teaching down deep inside you. And we're also offering this week only Joseph's amazing book that I want you to have, which is called Breaking Hell's Economy. I read it from the beginning to the end. I believe in one setting. That is how riveting I found this book. And it's really about how to break the systems of Satan that are in the world today. He calls it Breaking Hell's Economy, and it is just marvelous. You can order all these things by giving us a call or by going online right now. And when you reach out to us, please let us know how to pray for you. We really are praying people. If you've ever reached out to us, you know that you don't get away from us without somebody really praying for you. And we want to pray for you. So call us or email us and let us know how to pray for you. But hey, let's welcome Joseph back to the program. Brother, I'm so glad you're with Thank us. Thank you for having me, Rick. I'm so it's, thrilled. To be it is our honor that you're here. And of course, you've traveled all the way across the world to be with me and to be with our viewers this week. And today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about a corporate superpower. And what is that? Well, it's the ecclesia. It's the church. The church. The church globally coming together and just doing what God's called them to do. You know, the word for the church, ecclesia, it's a compound of two words. The word ek, it's a preposition, which means out, compounded with the word kaleo, which means to call. So when you compound the two words together, it's pronounced ecclesia, and it describes the called out ones. And what most people don't know is the word church did not begin with the Bible. It was a secular term that originated in Athens. And the ecclesia was a group of very distinguished people that had been elected and selected from society and called out. And they formed a corporate body. And that body was so powerful, it made all the decisions for the city. That's the background to the word church. And the New Testament writers knew that, which means in their mind, the church was not to be a little group of people huddled together in the corner in a dark room, but we are to be the distinguished people of God, assembled together, called out by God to rule and to reign. We are the ones that are supposed to set the moral and spiritual agenda. That's the call of the church. We are God's prophetic voice in the earth. And if we're not speaking for God and if we're not setting the agenda, then we're missing our purpose. That's who God sees us to be. We are the ecclesia. Anyway, sorry about that. 
Joseph, you're the one that's supposed to be teaching. <laughs> that was good information. Well, hey, take it away from me. <laughs> well, let me say this. We recognize in Matthew 16, we recognize when Jesus begins to talk and say, hey, the gates of hell, Peter, will not prevail against the church. That's right. It's not going to happen. And he's talking about the ecclesia. But what does that mean, prevail against the church and it, the gates of hell? They will not be able to overcome it. But what, what are those gates? Where are they? It's a system. Okay. It's a system. It's a, as it says in, in 1 John, a cosmos, the world. It's a way of saying the world and its system or driven by the spirit of Antichrist. As we know, the Bible teaches us that the Antichrist is not here today. Well, now, wait a minute. Yeah. How do you know that? Well, because he's the man of sin that will stand up and take over the world and he'll call himself God. The truth is he could be here. Well, he could be here, but yes. But the Bible talks about the day when the Antichrist will be revealed, the Greek right. word apokalupto, which means he's going to stand behind the curtains until the right moment. He could already be standing there. But when the church is vacated, suddenly the curtains are going to part, and bam, there he will be. It will be a revelation of the Antichrist. So he might be here. He might just be here. But whether he is or not, the system is working. The system is here. The spirit of Antichrist is here. But I like how you teach that because you recognize the Antichrist can't just appear because we're here. Right. Resisting the gates of hell. And many people say, we're, we're the great restrainer. We are. I know it. We, we, are. we are. It says in the book of Revelation 2, I think around chapter 13, where it says this, the Antichrist will make war against the saints, be given power over the saints. But that has to be different than the church. It has to be because the saints or the ecclesia, the real church of Jesus at this time, overcomes the gates of hell. You know, it's interesting to me that in the past couple of years, I've heard new vocabulary really used a lot, like we have to restrain, yeah. we have to hold back, mm. we have to prevent. You know what? We're speaking the language of the Bible. Yeah. We are the great restraining force. Powerful. Man, I like that. You know, many people who are watching this even right now, you know, the people of God know they're born for something great. They know they were born to accomplish something. And many people get discouraged in life when they hear about news. They're affected by the environment. They're affected by what's going on in the culture. And that is not what God's called the ecclesia to do. He's called us to understand who we are in Him and come together. You know, we're the body of Christ. In Romans chapter 12, it talks about the seven motivational gifts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the nine manifestational gifts. In Ephesians 4 and 11, it talks about the five-fold ministry. You add all that together, you have 21. 21 fundamentals. There's others, but that's the fundamentals. 21 gifts together makes us the body of Christ. And in that spectrum of gifting, God's called us the ecclesia, the ecclesia the ecclesia. And they stand up, we are to stand up together and drive back the gates of hell. The issue is, is people are trying to do other people's jobs. That's why I love your book, Apostles and Prophets. It is a remarkable work because people recognize their position. You really do more than just talk about apostles and prophets. You lay out positioning in the body of Christ. And what needs to happen to become a global superpower or a united superpower called the body of Christ, a corporate superpower, is that we come together knowing our position, knowing our role, knowing how to support one another. And when we fall into the right place in the body with where God's called us to be, we're unstoppable. I believe that's what will release economics. I believe that's what will release a healing and healthcare system. I believe all of those. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. What do you mean healing and healthcare system? Well, the spirit of the Lord that heals us, the, the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. But people in the right place, when you have healing anointings in the right place, you have individuals in the right position of the body of Christ. You have truly anointed pastors, pastoring churches, rather than people that are hirelings trying to do a business. You know, when I was younger in the ministry, I compared myself to others. Sure. And I would think, I don't walk like them. I don't scream like them. <laughs> and I always felt that I was inferior. And one day I realized, you know what? The very fact that I'm unique gives me a place. And I quit struggling to be like everybody else. That's powerful. And I just became who I am. That's powerful. I don't even know how to be somebody else. <laughs> and I think that when we as individuals, not just people in the ministry, but the body of Christ, when we find out who we're supposed to be and we get in our place, that's when we really begin to click. And that's right. We really begin to function. And in addition to that, sir, when we come together, not just knowing who we are, but we find our place with our tribe. Yes. I use that terminology, the tribe. Yes. Um, you'll know you're with the right people. 
I liken it this way. You know you're with your people because you can't say the wrong thing to the right people. And you can't say the wrong thing to the right people. I think you and I are part of the same tribe. I think so, Rick. I think so, sir. And a thing that I've noticed is people, when they're out of their lane or empowered in the wrong lane, the native tongue of the uninspired is criticism. Okay, say that again. The native tongue of the uninspired is criticism. What does uninspired mean? It means those that are not working in their anointing. They're not working in their revelation. They're out of their lane. They're not where they're supposed to be. Let's take your writing, for example. Okay. It is supernatural the way God writes through you. And it is tremendous. You do the work, you put in the time, you're very disciplined, very. But in that, there's also an anointing that preparation meets the opportunity for anointing. When people- hey, begin, say, say that again. When preparation meets opportunity, I like that. Wow. Praise God. When preparation meets opportunity, that's you taking discipline and meeting what God's told you to do. And the anointing ensues. The anointing mm. happens. Uh, it begins to empower you to get the, the work done. I believe when people try to, as you just said, look at a gift, they look at something and they say, I'm just going to be that, or I'm going to go over there. When someone's uninspired, they try to achieve the same results through the wrong Mode, um, mode. And they get to that position many times or try to get to a position or a placing through not being inspired, no revelation. So a lot of times the traits that go with that are criticism, the native tongue of the uninspired, those that do not have a revelation, those that are not truly where they're supposed to be. There's criticism. Institutional settings can be critical. They did that with John the Baptist, for example. They did it with Jesus. They did it with Paul. They did it with John. They did it with James. They They've did done it. it with you. They've done it with me. They've done oh, it with some you. Some have done it with me. It's They've okay. Done. It just yeah. goes with the territory. That's right. And many of you who are watching, the native tongue of the uninspired is criticism because whatever the institution cannot control, it has to kill or at the very least persecute. Okay. And so we've got to rise up and we've got to unite, not fight. If it's too small, men will fight. But if it's big enough, men will unite. And I believe God's calling the body of Christ. Say that again. If something is too small, men will fight. But if something's big enough, a big enough vision, a big enough calling, men will unite. And God's calling men to unite, men and women, as, as the body of Christ to be a corporate superpower. You know, in uh, Psalm 133, I've been looking at it this week. Yes. It talks about the dew of Mount Hermon. Mm. I love that. So good. Because it, it likens the anointing to dew. Well, the dew point, you know, the, the dew, the moisture is in the air all the time, but you can't see it. But suddenly there's a moment when all the moisture in the air manifests as do. And when that moment comes, everything is covered by moisture. Well, it's a description of the anointing. And that scripture is about unity. Wow. And when the body of Christ comes together, they're in their place, they're in unity. It creates a do point when suddenly the anointing breaks and everybody gets covered with the anointing. That's powerful. Corporate anointing. Wow. And I believe that's what God wants to give us. Boy, He's waiting powerful. on us. I feel the Holy Spirit when you said that. Well, it's like Acts chapter 2. Yeah. I mean, God was waiting for them to get into a place of unity in the upper room. Yeah. And the moment that unity came, bam, the dew point happened, and the Spirit of God fell on everybody in the room. And that's what God wants to do in you. He wants to do it in your church. He wants to do it in the church. He wants to do it in the nations of the world. He's waiting for us to get into a place our, where we're supposed to be and in a place of unity and bam, the dew point will come and the dew of the Spirit will just go everywhere. That's powerful. That is po how good and pleasant it is. When brothers dwell together in, in unity. In unity. Yes. And they come together over biblical unity, over principle. It's right. not enough to sing Kumbaya in a room. Right. We've got to come together over principle. And that's the Word of God. That's right. And you, you know, you're such a uniter, Rick. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. You're a uniter. You're, you're a great leader in the body of Christ. Anybody that knows you, uh, I, I say this all the time in our ministry. We say knowing Rick Renner makes us better just Aww. better. It's true. And so, well, I want us to know Jesus better. We want to know Jesus better. Well, praise God. You know, this corporate anointing, the corporate body of Christ, I believe the reason people are suffering lack in the body of Christ is although there's been a lot of correct teaching, it's just incomplete. Correct, but not complete on issues such as increase or prosperity. I love that teaching, but we don't see the completeness of it because I believe it's meant for a corporate anointing to fulfill the gospel. And when that begins to happen, whether it's health, wealth, 
increase all of it. Vision for your life, corporately, in the right positioning, I believe we can change the world. Mm. I really do. And I think that's what God's calling us to do in this time. And when we all get in our place and that anointing moves, then we're really empowered to break hell's economy. Break it. Yes. I mean, break it. Oh, I mean, break it. Well, the gates of hell is that system. It's trying to stop people. You see the chokehold on the way media is impacting the generation. You see the chokeholds coming through information. They're altering the language, Rick. They're altering the way people speak. Uh, In the American uh, English-speaking world, they're trying to alter terminology. You know, of course, I I live in Moscow. And when the Bolshevik Revolution took place, they understood that in order to change a nation, they had to change vocabulary. Yeah. So they changed all the terms, became very woke. I'm talking about 1917, 1918. They began to pull down all the old monuments. They began to change what people looked at, and they actually appointed thought police mm. because they understood you had to control how people think, you have to control the language they speak, tell them what they can say, tell them what they cannot say, and then you can begin to reform a new generation. And not only that, Krupskaya, who was Lenin's wife, was appointed to be in charge of public education. And she said, you've got to tell the kids what you want them to believe, whether it's right or wrong. And if you can form the thinking of the kids, then you can take them out of the authority of their parents. And then from that point, you can build a new society. Joseph, we're talking about the gates of hell. That's what they're doing. And it's it's just a repeat today. There's nothing new. Nothing new. And unfortunately, people don't know history. They don't. And so these people today that are embracing socialism, they don't they, oh. they don't know history. They don't. Been there, done that. My friends, we need to break hell's economy. That is not a system that we need. It's, it, it's, it's a godless system. It is a godless system driven by the spirit of Antichrist. It is. It is. And the spirit of Antichrist is hungry for control. It's hungry for it. And there's almost a, well, not almost, it's a thug spirit. I love that phrase. It's a demon. It's a thug intimidation, bullying, as I think you said before, a thug demon that's trying to bully the culture. I think I'm going to do a series called Overcoming a Thug Spirit. Come on. I like that. I like it too. Come on, Rick. That'll help people because this thug spirit wants people to sit down, shut their mouth, do what they're told, and suddenly they begin to fall into the system of the Antichrist. They're even, they're even uh, repressed for thinking. Right. Right. They feel guilty about everything. And it's not the way it's supposed to be. Jesus, you know, religion is very much like that. Religion will come along or the spirit of Antichrist. And I'm talking about the ungodly kind of religion, the kind that bows you down and makes you weak and and, and submissive. Jesus comes along and stands us up like sons and daughters. It says, I want you to stand up as a light in darkness. I want you to rise in the middle of this present evil age. And that thug demon wants us all to be quiet, intimidated, pushed back. And we are not to be that. We're to stand up, speak the truth, be loving, but don't be intimidated by this culture. You got the news, the legacy news medium, which just means the old order of news that tells you how to think, tells you what to believe. Artificial intelligence is running away off the chain right now. And they're trying to use that to also cause you to think a certain way. And I'm telling you, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we will rise up in this time. Mm-hmm. And I know we got one more round in us. I know the spirit of the Lord is here. What does that mean, one more round? One more round means if my people who humble themselves will humble themselves and call my name, I will hear from heaven. I'll give them another season to stand and bring the gospel to a dying Well, world. the same Bible that prophesies that there's going to be a mess in the end of the age uh-huh. also prophesies God's going to pour out his spirit at the end of the age. It's true. And I believe that we're headed for the greatest outpouring the church has ever witnessed beyond anything anybody has ever imagined. I believe it's in front of us. I do too. I believe we're a part of it. We're watching the preview. We're watching the preview. And I believe it's going to get strong. The darkness will accelerate, but so will the light. And I believe we are the secret weapon. God's going to spring on the world. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Strength is here. I just want to say something to your viewers. Please. Lord, I just, I bless the people of God. I not only bless you, I speak life over you. Rick and I stand here today and we just break off that thug demon spirit that's trying to intimidate you. You might be elderly. 
You might be at home. You might be saying, well, what can I do? What, how do I stand up against this culture? The future is scary. The Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And I'm telling you, this is the time where depending on God is going to break loose his economy. It's going to break loose his favor on you. He's going to open up every good and perfect gift unto you. And you don't have to be afraid of anything. You can look at the future and laugh. It is God's will that you increase and break through and break the gates of hell. And this thug spirit will not touch you during this time. God is with you. Don't you be intimidated or afraid for one second. God is with you. Jesus is Lord. And your future is so bright, you're going to have to put sunglasses on when you look at it. On a bad day, you're called to be the very best there is. Amen. All right, I have a request. Yes. We're going to come back tomorrow. And I really respect the prophetic call on your life. And tomorrow, I want you to talk to us about the future. Okay. We're talking about breaking hell's economy. Amen. What does that look like when it's broken? And what does the future hold, particularly for society and for the church? Okay, sir. Can we do that tomorrow? I look forward to it. I know it's going to be good. You know, you and I have had time to fellowship together and just every moment is so rich. And friends, that's why I wanted you to experience my friend Joseph Z. And hey, how can they find you online? Oh, you can find us at josephz.com or you can go to any social media platform with Joseph Z and you'll find us there. We go live every weekday morning, Monday through Friday. And I watch you every day. Oh my goodness. I even watch your Sunday broadcast. I'm honored. Anyway, friends, we're really glad that you're with us. And when we come back tomorrow, that's what we're going to talk about. What does the future hold? What does it look like when you break hell's economy? It's going to be good. But we'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Joseph Z. and Rick Renner sat down to discuss God's plan to use the church and obedient believers to break hell's economy in these last days. Hell's economy is represented in every world system where the dark God of this world has ruled. But God wants to use the church, and He wants to use you to break the devil's grip on the world's systems that are around you. In this eye-opening five-part series with Joseph Z. and Rick Renner, you'll learn what exactly is hell's economy that needs to be broken? How to identify the areas where the dark God of this world is exercising His rule? How God wants to use the church and you to be a wrecking ball to destroy the devil's works? This captivating series is available in digital and physical format starting at just $10. We're also offering you Joseph Z's riveting best-selling book, Breaking Hell's Economy, your guide to last day's supernatural provision. This is not your typical book. It's truly an eye-opening revelation of where the devil is working in the world around us and what we as believers need to do to tear down his demonic influences in family, friends, and in areas of life that we see and experience every day. Lay hold of this revelation, defy hell, and live your life knowing you are destined to thrive in the last days. Order your copy of Breaking Hell's Economy today for $22. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series, Breaking Hell's Economy, and the book, Breaking Hell's Economy by Joseph Z. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing in the big studio in our new building in Moscow. You helped us build this building. Behind me is the big fireplace. It's covered. That's really the focus of the new studio. There's going to be library shelves and so many wonderful things. And I'm going to be sitting right here teaching the Bible verse by verse, diving into the Greek New Testament to bring teaching that people can trust to the ends of the world. And when I tell you the ends of the world, I really mean that. People are reaching out to us from the farthest ends of the world saying thank you for bringing this teaching right to where we are. But thank you so much for helping us. We really do what we say we're going to do, so here it is. And at the same time, we've been retiring the debt on the big Tulsa facility. That facility is so wonderful. And from that office in Tulsa, we are ministering to the needs of our partners. Partner ministry is not secondary to us. 
It is first place. We really mean it when we call people partners. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls, making calls, touching lives, and strengthening people who need to be strengthened. That's God's mandate to us, to strengthen those that are weak and those who need to be stronger. And we're reaching out by faith and through various means to touch people. And what a pleasure it is. It's really an honor to have partners. And that means you. Thank you for being a partner. And right now, we're paying off that Tulsa facility, and a lot of it has already been paid off. That's miraculous. But it's been possible because of the grace of God, the favor of God, and because of your faithful and generous giving. And I want to say thank you on behalf of me and Denise and our sons, our family, and our ministry team for the way that you've joined hands with us to help retire the debt on that building. My friends, when that building is paid off, it will suddenly release a flood of finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the ends of the earth. And that's God's call to us. Proverbs 10:21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And that's our task, to feed many the Word of God. And today I want to thank you for what you've done to help us build this facility and to pay off the Tulsa building, and together we can get this done. This week, it's not just me, it's me and my friend Joseph Z, and I really call him my friend because he is my friend. That's why I wanted you to meet him. And please go online, look him up. His ministry is tremendous. You'll be blessed by it. But this week, we're offering you the entire series. It's five parts, and it's called Breaking Hell's Economy. Rick Renner with Joseph Z. My friends, it's really about what Joseph Z is sharing. This is just powerful, and I want you to get it. And it comes with a study guide. And this week only, we're offering you his book, which is called Breaking Hell's Economy. Look at this book. This book is amazing. Page one, all the way to the very end, he deals with breaking hell's economy, how to destroy this thug spirit that's trying to dominate the world today and to rise up with the power of God. And I know this book will really encourage you, and that's why I want you to have it. So go online to order all these things, or you can give us a call. And I always tell you that we're people of prayer, and we really are. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, if two of you will agree as touching anything, I'll do it. And if you'll call us or send us an email, we'll find the right scripture for you, and together we'll get into agreement with Jesus and with you, and Jesus will do what he said he'll do. He'll move mightily in your life. And there really is a miracle with your name on it just waiting for you. We'll pray with you, and God will move in your life. But I want to pray with you right now with Joseph Z. Let's hold hands. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for our precious viewing family. I thank you, Father, for our partners and the privilege that Joseph could minister to our TV family today. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you've called the church to be anointed, to be united, to rise up as a great global corporate power. We thank you for this, and we declare it for every church, for every ministry, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, tomorrow we're going to talk about what does the future hold. Don't miss it. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there is power. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.